Hey, everybody. It's Friday. So that means it's Facebook Live with Maureen Walbioff. Practical wisdom for nonprofit accidental techies like us, card carrying members. One of the places where I find people get really overwhelmed if they don't have formal training is managing nonprofit technology projects because they can kind of be a pain in the butt. There's a lot of details, there's a lot of moving parts, lots of people, lots of money on the line, and often really high visibility. So today we are gonna talk about something super exciting, which is project management tools. Woo, yeah, get your party started early for the weekend. Sort of necessary, sometimes a necessary evil, and it's one of those places where those three P's that I talk about a lot, the people, platforms, and process, all kind of come together. Um, a good project management tool can help you track things um, along all of those lines, the people lines, the process lines, and um, the platforms that you're using to actually build uh, out new tech stuff or design your new website or what have you. And as with most things on Facebook Live Fridays, I'm going to start with a story that might sound familiar to you. We are going to talk about Lou today. Lou is a, a pal of mine, and he was in the middle of a, a big website design and development project for his nonprofit organization. And he was ready to quit. <laughs> he was about this close to walking out the door because of this website project, right? I bet you can imagine yourself sort of in this place where I hate everything and I just want to take my marbles and go home. That's where he was. And I've been trying to catch up with him for a couple of months. He was always too busy, never had time to chat. And when we finally made time, he found a window in the middle of this website project where we could talk for 15 or 20 minutes. He talked for 15 minutes without stopping. And it was a laundry list of grievances <laughs> you know it's like and another thing everything's behind I'm tired it's so disorganized people aren't getting their tasks done on time I don't know where we are with the budget blah 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 lots of revisions inefficiencies yada 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 we've heard it all sounds familiar um, and when he finally had aired all of his grievances about how horrible this website project was, and by extension, the team, although he didn't say it was the project team, kept calling it the project, it was a little, it was pretty easy to figure out that he was talking about the people on his project team who just were not toeing the line. And so when he was done talking, I asked him this one really simple question that kind of took the wind out of his sails a little bit, which was, Lou, that sounds terrible. What are you using to manage your project? And, you know, we were on the phone, so I didn't see his face, but I imagine that he opened his and closed his mouth a couple of times and said nothing because there was nothing. He had nothing to say because he wasn't using anything to manage his project. He was using emails. He was using paper. Nothing wrong with paper. I'm fond of paper. He was using seat of the pants project management um, tactics and tools and it as he was leading the project this didn't just reflect poorly on him, his people you know those bad people who weren't getting their tasks done but really it was reflecting on him so when other people on the team or leadership kind of checked in or grumbled about the project they were talking about Lou. They weren't necessarily talking about the fact that there wasn't a PM tool. So it took the wind out of sales just a little tiny bit. And it's really common, right? Like you've got two ends of the spectrum usually um, for project management. One of them is like super detail oriented. Mm, you know, everything must be documented within five minutes of it happening. Um, and there's lots of infrastructure and lots of rules and laws about how we work together on a project. And at the other end of the spectrum, there's people like Lou and his team, which is like, I don't know, I wasn't formally trained. Can't we just all get along <laughs> you know, and do the things that we uh, all have to do to get this project to finally finish and finish successfully? 
um, you know, my uh, former, the former agency that I was a part of, Firefly Partners, shout out to Firefly, um, they used multiple project management tools because stuff had to be recorded in different places for different reasons. Um, I do not advise that. I think unless you're an agency, that gets you into trouble really quickly. But I do see that a lot where folks need something. And so they bring in a tool and team A uses this project management approach and team B uses that project management approach. And it's almost as bad as having nothing. So if you take nothing away from our little chat today, it's going to be one tool to roll them all. If you could possibly manage it. Why? Why am I talking to you today about using a PM tool? Why was Lou ready to, you know, curse everyone that he worked with? Really because the, the difference between a, a rough project, a terrible project, a project that people will tell stories about forever, and a project that is smooth boils down to two things, just two, organization, try some, and collaboration. Those two things have to be in place for a project to go along bumpy, because they will be bumpy, unpleasant surprises will pop up, they happen, but if we're organized, and we're collaborating, it puts us in a better position to do something about those things when they bubble up, as they often do. So organization, I think we all know what I'm talking about, but organization at its core is about keeping everything straight. It's about knowing where stuff is, where to find things, and not needing to dig in, maybe it's in my inbox, and maybe it's in my Google Drive, and maybe it's in my Dropbox. You need to know where things are. Knowing what's on my plate and when it's due also falls under organization for myself. Even if I'm not the project lead, I have to organize my own work. If we're working on a nonprofit technology project, you know it's just added to the other things that are on our plates. So I have to figure out how much time I have to do a thing and when it's due and who I have to work with and so forth if there's dependencies. Organization. Second is collaboration. Sorry, folks, unless you're working by yourself on a project and you can use whatever kind of organizational method or not, um, you have to collaborate with other people nine times out of 10 on any project. And when tech is involved, it's like 100%. Collaboration really is about the experience of the people on the project team and being able to work together smoothly. Um, making agreements about things and processes, project processes, and keeping those agreements, sticking to them. Um, clear communication. I know where to go to find the decision about this thing. Um, trying not to make it harder for someone else on the team. Having someone else's back. Um, I don't want to do something in a way that the person behind me didn't anticipate. And that means they're gonna to have to undo stuff that they did and redo it. Very common to see that happen. Something gets built a certain way, it's off the specs, it's off the tech specs. And there's this horrible ripple effect where, well, now that it's built like this, we can't have the homepage function like we thought we could. And, and I see that happen a lot. So organization and collaboration. So why not use a tool? There's a million tools out there. Um, and with most tech-like project management tools, there's a ton of different products. They all basically do the same things. Um, the functionality that is most helpful that you should be looking for are these few bullets. They help you set priorities. What's most important to happen this week, this month, right now? So everybody understands that number one job is to finish X, is to finish rewriting our content, for example. Delegating tasks, assigning work to people. If you are leading a project, even a piece of a project, part of your responsibility is to keep other people on track and make sure that they know when things must be done, um, who they're going to next, how many days you have to do it, sometimes how many hours you've got to do it in. 
delegating tasks and monitoring. Um, sharing files. This, I, you know, uh, the Dropbox scavenger hunt, try not to do that. I've totally done that with teams where you think you've got some organization, you know, sketched out in your brain and you've got designs version one and then design version two and design version three and not everything goes back into the same folder. So it lets you share files in an organized kind of controlled environment. Um, identifying risk. A PM tool, no matter what the name is or whether it's free or for money, um, should help you identify when things are going off track. Hey, Ben. Um, good to see you here this Friday afternoon. Talking about PM tools. I bet you've got a favorite or maybe um, a least favorite. <laughs> so if you've got anything to share in the comments, I'd love to hear a PM tool that you've used that you like. Um, so back to identifying risk, yeah, for you to be able to do some data visualization and say, are we on track, are we off track, um, what do we do about it? And recognizing it as early as possible so that you can head it off at the pass, maybe minimize the impact a little bit. Um, PM tool should also help you do 360 communication. You may have external people who are part of your project team. You probably have internal people. You may have stakeholders. Ben loves Basecamp, PM Lite. Basecamp's been around for a long time. It used to be um, pretty locked down and fairly complicated and rigid. That was That's my experience of it. But they have definitely lightened it up. The UI is much easier to use. Thanks for weighing in, Ben. Um, the 360 communication means that you may uh, have someone in leadership who gets to look at designs. Um, they may want status updates about how it's going. Are we on track? Is there risk? Anything I need to know? Will this website launch on time? Um, and that's a great way to invite people into some level of detail is giving them certain rights to a PM tool. Um, and then finally, you know, really monitoring the two moving targets um, that can bite you in a project are time and money. So if your website has to go live on September 1st, has to, has to, has to, for whatever reason, um, you can monitor how well that timeline is being followed and adjust things, um, whether it's the work or expectations of people in your team um, who are waiting for that website to go live on September 1st, and maybe it's not going to go live until the 3rd. But you know that enough ahead of time and can set expectations accordingly. So those are really the things that you're looking for. Ability to set priorities, delegate tasks, and monitor how people are making progress on them sharing files, identifying risk, communicating 360, and monitor the timeline and budget. And in some cases, allowing other people to monitor the timeline and budget. So it's not just you staying awake at night if you're going off track. The choice in what tool you use often comes down to two factors. Is it free? <laughs> in which case, I'm going to use it, or at least I'm going to try it. So the price, definitely, and then the personal preference and whatever the UI is. Trello, okay, so Ben and um, a colleague, a woman named Kathy, who I know, who's awesome, um, just wrote a book, an awesome book. And as soon as I get more details about the date that that book is available, you can find them here. Um, but they used Trello, which also comes down to a personal preference in how the tool is use. Trello lets you make cards, kind of move them around and color code them. Um, so it's very much like my favorite tool, and I have some here to show you, which is Post-it Notes. I love Post-it Notes. I think in Post-it Notes, I probably use them too much. Actually, I should buy stock in Post-it Notes because they help me get my ideas out of my head and in a very easy to manipulate way, and that is what a PM tool should do for you. So um, I'm going to put a link in the comments after the video is done today with uh, a link to an article on Captera. Um, I use them sometimes to look up different products. They're kind of a clearinghouse of reviews, and they serve up some information about cost, and um, they give you some screenshots so you can sort of see what things look like. Um, Captera has a great page all about project management tools with way more than we're going to talk about this afternoon. So you can find that link and check it out.
Kathy's here, the other author of Ben's book. So you use Trello to write, help write the book with Ben, Kathy. That's what it sounds like. Um, had you used Trello before or was it your first time out? I'm very curious. So, you know, I've used a bunch of these tools. I've got clients who've used a bunch of these tools. Right now, today, like in May of 2019, I hear the same names over and over and over again. Basecamp is one of them. Smartsheet is great. Um, that was my first exposure to a project management tool. It is kind of like Excel gone crazy wild. Um, so you can do lots of things and communicate and store files and if you change a timeline in one piece of it, it can like ripple out to the other pieces of the tool. Um, Teamwork Projects is free. Um, it used to be called Teamwork PM. Teamwork Projects is like a microsite for your project. It lets you set up a greeting page and people can put their pictures in and you can manage conversation, timelines, to-do lists, things like that. Um, Trello, we mentioned before, that's a very post-it note-y kind of interface. Um, but for something so simple, it's super, super powerful. Um, I know lots of folks who use it and have stopped looking. They love Trello. Um, Slack is another one that is an app. Um, it's Yes, it's cloud-based, but you can get it on your phone also. And it's sort of an all-in-one, like microsite, intranet, chat room, file storage. You can't really build a timeline in it, at least my, my use of it hasn't led me to figure out how to do that. But you can put everything there and all the conversations get put in there. You can have video meetings in there, um, store notes and things like that. So Slack, Slack is the cool kids PM tool these days, I think. Airtable is another one I hear people mention a lot. I believe that is also free, where there's a free version for a certain number of users. Um, calendars, file storage, different permissions, timelines, um, dependencies, tracking status of things, all of that can happen very easily in Trello. Uh, I mean, Airtable, sorry, missed my looking at the list. Um, Airtable, uh, Asana is another project management tool that I hear some people really, really love. And Monday or Monday.com um, has a very bright and poppy kind of user interface. I have a client right now who's using it in kind of a non-traditional way. They're using Monday to track client, their clients, because they're service providing nonprofit, they're tracking program, programmatic health. So what's the relationship with the program director? Um, and it can really give leadership insight into whether things are green, going great, yellow, mm, I smell smoke, we've got to fix this, um, or red, like it's on fire and we got to do some recovery here. So lots of graphical things that you can use in Monday. And then the other fairly new one I'm hearing a lot about is work zone. That is not free. Um, I haven't played with it uh, to a great extent. And so I would check that out if you are like going to do a little bit of free trial or looking at screenshots. Smartsheet, Teamwork Projects, Trello, Slack, Airtable, Asana, Monday.com, and WorkZone. And that's just a tiny component of sort of the easy to use, super user friendly versions. Then you can go all the way up to Microsoft Project which you kind of need special training and a certification to be able to use. So that's for like the serious PMs, the certified PMs use Microsoft Project. How do you start using one? How do you pick one? Um, <laughs> this may seem counterintuitive because we're talking about putting everything into a system, but I would start by writing out the project work first, even just a phase. And if you've never done that, you have to start with that. You've got to get it all out in a format that makes sense to you. Again, post-it notes, pencil and paper, type up a document um, so that you've got some of the basic components that you're going to be putting into a project management tool already there. Because if you're experimenting with a new PM tool and trying to think about the project logically, sequentially for the first time, it's you're going to feel like the PM tool is too hard. And really what the problem is, is that you haven't organized the project in your head first 
or on paper first to be able to input it and use that system in a way that might be useful to you. So um, you got to put all of that stuff out on paper. And some of the things that I would, just a handful of, of things, columns, right, of info. You want the phases of the project. You want kickoff, discovery, design, development, website testing, content porting, all those big buckets of project work that have a lot of tasks inside them. Start with your phases. There's usually about four or five phases in most nonprofit technology projects. Um, the tasks then, right? So if you've got um, a discovery meeting, you've got, um, you know, invite people to the meeting. And who's going to take notes? Were notes taken? Um, what were the decisions made? And then how does that information get um, shared with other people who weren't part of that discovery session? Um, they may be role-based. They may be person-based. I wouldn't get too hung up on formalities. It's kind of whatever's going to work for you and your team. Um, you also want to have the responsible party. I want names. I want to know that if Ben is responsible to do a thing, and I want Ben to know that he is responsible to do a thing. So any task that you've got in a project plan, no matter what you're using to manage it, got to have a responsible party. And if you decide to change it, change the person, it's no longer Ben, it's Kathy. You got to update your project management tool to reflect any changes that you've made on the fly. And there will be those changes on the fly. You also want start and stop dates. Um, if Ben's got to do a thing and he must start, he can't start until today, the 17th of May, and he's got to be done by the 31st, all of us, me, if I'm leaving, and for sure Ben, needs to know that this is his window to get this stuff done so that he can organize his other work around that or push back or maybe even get it done early. <laughs> Never going to happen. Not necessarily with you, Ben, but just generally people are usually squeaking in at the 11th hour. It's 11.59 on the 31st. Marked it is done. Go me. That's normal. Um, if you get super granular as you're planning your project out before you put it into a test run of a PM tool, you can also put subtasks in. Um, estimated hours. If Ben's got to do a thing from the 17th to the 31st of May, he knows how many days. How many hours does he have to do that in? Do I know that it's going to take him 10 hours or is this a task that he can really do in two and I'm just giving him a big wide window to get that work done? Once you've got that all like written down in some way or post-it noted out and you've taken a snapshot of your post-its on the wall, you can get a free trial of just one or two tools, like literally just one or two, not too many. Watch any how-to videos before you start. Most of these tools let you kind of jump right in. They might be building help files, but get a basic understanding of how they organize information and the names they use for different things because they can be different from product to product. You might be a little confused. And then when you feel like you've got a little bit of intel on how to use the system, input your info. Take the stuff that you wrote down and put it in. Start to build that timeline. Start to assign things to people. Um, then you can sort of move around those start and stop dates if once you're seeing it laid out in front of you in a tool, it feels like it's unrealistic to ask somebody to do something in a certain window of time or you're not going to have enough time to get something done. So you're going to have to figure out another way to make it all happen in the time frame that you need. There are pre-built templates for lots of different types of projects inside all of these tools. So I heartily encourage you to start with something pre-built. Um, don't start with a blank slate. Start with something that's already kind of baked that you can modify and customize um, and use to your particular needs. You're going to need to try this on your own or with a small team before you roll it out to everybody. It's the kiss of death when you've got, I've played with this PM tool for five minutes. I've got a sketch of our skeleton of a project in here. Everybody must use it. But you yourself haven't used it enough to know what's working and what's not working. Any little pro tips that you can pass along. You may not love some of it until you've test driven it. So find 
something small that you and maybe a couple of other people can work on together. You can get some feedback. It's sure to improve or move you into another system if it turns out everybody kind of thinks it's a dog. You could even, in the middle, like Lou's big website project, right? He could take a tiny component of that big giant project and try to use a project management tool to manage just something very discreet. Content writing, okay? That's, that's not so small. People who are getting ready for a website redesign often feel compelled to redo all of their content or write a lot of new content. Um, very common situation, but that takes a lot of time. You need to understand who's approving things, who's writing things, um, our page is going to link to certain things, and so that can be a big responsibility for an internal team, even if a lot of the work is being done by partners, web design and development shops, strategists, and the like. Um, so find a way to test this out before you go, everybody's got to use this thing. Um, it sets you up for success, and really it can set the rest of the team up for success. You don't want to see them all splashing around, kind of drowning, and throw them a, you know, a life preserver made of lead. <laughs> it's like, this didn't help me. You actually want to throw them something that's useful. The only way you can do that is if you know first, um, firsthand. Adoption. Getting people to adopt the tool. You've tested it out. You've got some lessons learned. You think this is the best thing since sliced bread. You're going to introduce it to your team. Some real tips to encourage adoption. Um, a couple weeks ago, I did a video like this on change management. I think it's pinned at the top of this uh, accidental techie page. If you haven't watched it and you're considering a PM tool, do yourself a favor and watch that video. I'll give you some pointers to help people manage the change. I just want to send you stuff through email. I don't want to have to put it into a tool. I've got my own system. You're going to hear all that and more. Um, be prepared for it. Don't be surprised and don't react in a snippy way. React in a supportive way. So some adoption tips. This is a culture change. <laughs> it's not just a, now you're going to use this. It's literally about how we do our work, how we communicate. Our methodologies and our communication channels are going to shift. Get tightened up. Get tidied up a little bit, a little more controlled. So expect it to take about three months, sadly, for people to really get behind it, feel comfortable, etc. Um, we make a ton of little decisions about our work every single day, and if suddenly a PM tool is like thrust upon us, um, it can take some time for us to be able to, you know, work with it and not around it or not ignore that it's there. And I'm not doing it that way. Um, start small, like I said, work out the kinks ahead of time. Get buy-in. Get buy-in. And the way that you get buy-in is by being transparent. This is what I think the benefits are going to be. These are the problems that I think this is going to solve. This is what I'm prepared is going to be a little harder or take a little longer, and we're all cool with that. And we're going to meet regularly, not just about the project, but to check in on how it's going using the project tool. Um, Chat with people individually if you see that they're having trouble. A uh, project meeting is not the time to say, Scott, I didn't see you enter any of your tasks as complete in the project management tool. Not going to win you any friends. Not just with Scott, but other people are going to be like, is, are they going to call me out in a public meeting too if I don't do this? doesn't feel too good. Um, not super value laden, right, in terms of transparency and trust and, you know, we're all going to work together on this. So call people out privately, offer support privately, do some monitoring, ask people, what can I do to make it easier for you to use this? Not, what can I do to make you like using this or want to use it, but to do the act. Um, and if you come to them and really want to support them and not kind of bash them, uh, they will tell you what they need. They will share their struggles and you can work together to figure out how to help them like get on the horse and start to ride it instead of worrying about it or being obstructionist. Um, give training, not just 
training of watch this video. It took me five minutes to learn it. Why can't you learn it in five minutes? But different people have different learning styles. Some people want to watch a video. Some people want to be shown. Some people want a checklist that they can follow. Did it, did it, did it. Um, some people want to just try it themselves. They're very physical learners and they want to click around on their own and come back to you with a thousand questions, sometimes ideas. So be open to different ways for people to learn this tool. If you want them to adopt it, you got to work at it too. It's not just them. Consider your business processes. Um, you may be uh, really setting your team up for project success. However, now they need to do double entry. They need to enter the amount of time they took to do a task in the PM tool. They need to put it in their timesheet too. So if anything that you're doing is causing duplicate work, quadruplicate work, um, name it, and then figure out over time a way to at least lighten the burden somehow. Uh, that would be my, my pointer for you. And some people say a friendly competition can help, you know, like there's a $10, $15 Starbucks or Amazon gift card in it for the person who does the most complete job of entering their tasks or marking their task status or for storing files in our PM tool and not in a Google folder, not communicating by email, actually using the chat feature. So, you know, if your tool is free, budget for some prizes. Um, not in a way that's going to get really aggressive, but in a way that it's spurring people on to actually comply and uh, friendly competition can help with that. So PM tools, Smartsheet, Teamwork, Trello, Slack, Airtable, Asana, Monday, WorkZone, Basecamp. Um, I'll put the link to the Captera. PM tool listing below. And there's also a really great um, resource that I found that is a PM starter guide for non-project managers that's on WorkZone's website. Just have to put your email in and you can download it. Looks like a very good resource. So I'll put the link to that as well. Um, we've got two webinars next week with Blackboard. I've got two webinars next week with Blackboard. One of them is on Tuesday afternoon, three o'clock Eastern time all about the smart way to evaluate and buy new software or new systems for your nonprofit. That's going to be a lot of fun. It's free. So I'll drop the registration link below. And then on Thursday, uh, also with Blackbot and uh, my pal Carrie from the Be The Match Foundation, we're going to be talking all about do-it-yourself peer-to-peer programs. Um, if you've got a physical event or you've got a DIY peer-to-peer -peer or personal fundraising program that's kind of um, needs a little injection of uh, creativity uh, or innovation, come on over. That's Thursday afternoon at 1 p.m. Eastern, and I'll drop that link in below as well. Next week is the slide into summer. Memorial weekend is next weekend. Um, it is official. We are now in summertime. Cannot wait. So we're going to have a little fun next week, um, and we're going to talk about the one thing that you must always do after any nonprofit project, whether it has to do with technology, it's a campaign, it's an event that you're putting together, one thing that you have to do to get the most out of all the work that you put into that project in the first place. And I'm teasing you. I'm not going to tell you what it actually is. So um, I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much for joining me every Friday afternoon, 1230 Eastern Time. Um, and I think that's all I have to say today. So thanks for showing up next week. Same time, 1230 p.m., same channel. And we'll get our Memorial Weekend started with a bang. Um, I will see you then. Thanks so much. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye.